Hey, this is Tommy John, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV. Today's show is brought to you by UppercutChops.com. Check out their tasty selection of all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu steaks and chops. Wait till you taste their best-in-class New York steaks, the filet mignon, of course, the king of all those gigantic cowboy cut and tomahawk cut ribeyes. Best I ever had, probably be the best you ever have as well. Check them out at UppercutChops.com. That's UppercutChops.com. Or give them a call and find out what's for dinner. 702-799-9935. 702-799-9935. 702-799-9935 for UppercutChops.com. Yes! You know, you can also email them at info at uppercutchops.com. And a big welcome in everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates and independents from coast to coast. Everybody else on Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Time Warner, and Wild Cable Television joining us. Hotel TV and everybody on Chicago Food Favorites on Facebook. Yes, Chicago Food Favorites. Listen, folks, doesn't matter whether you live there. Maybe you like Chicago food. Maybe you like pizza. Maybe you like hot dogs. Maybe you like Italian beef. Maybe you like gyros. Maybe you like Italian ice. Whatever the hell it is. A good Italian food. Chinese food. Thai food. Mexican food. Soul food. You name it. They've got to check out Chicago Food Favorites on Facebook and tell them the circus sent you. Yes! Of course, we have to throw that yes in there. You know, that's my patented yes. So if you ever hear anybody else using that, make sure you contact me at info at the sports circus dot com. <laughs> anyway, all right. All right. And so we are joined here by Ian Rakelli from the Sports Angle. And Ian's been in the rodeo for kind of a long time. And Ian and I had just watched the Stanley Cup final game seven. And Ian, what was your take of game seven of the Stanley Cup final? How about a great game defensively? You had two teams that were just doing whatever it took to win this game. You saw Florida stretching out their arms, legs, bodies, tick, whatever it was. You had a Florida Panthers team, Sergei Bobrovsky on his head every single play. And then you had the defense stepping up and actually helping out and saving Bobrovsky at times and making sure that the Florida Panthers would win and bring home Lord Stanley, the best trophy in all of sports, in my opinion, and making the Florida Panthers their first ever championship. You know, it's been 30 years, and I love the fact, of course, if you know a little bit about the rats and the history and stuff like that, like in Vegas, they throw these plastic flamingos on the ice and stupid D toilet, they throw out the octopi and all this other crap. But in Florida, I love the fact that they throw the rats out because Scott Mellenby, of course, killed a rat at the old stadium, and that kind of stuck with the team. People are asking me, well, what's the deal with the rats? Well, why don't you read about it and learn about it? And then you wouldn't have to be told about it, if you know what I mean. And then maybe get a punch in the head or something like that. I don't know. Who knows? Or a bite in the ear. Who knows? Anyway, the reality is a very, very gritty and grindy Florida Panther team. Look, those. let me tell you something. Those guys played like bowling balls because they would go in and basically roll over and bowl over every Edmonton player that would come near the puck. And you see, folks, if you watch these games, you see some teams are more skilled than others. Edmonton is uh, clearly a more skilled team. But the problem is they are very soft in their own defensive end. They make a lot of mistakes in their own end. Where Florida just plays overly aggressive, they get beat in odd man rushes. And that was really the difference in those three games that Edmonton actually won. 
But what you saw, if you watched Game 7, if not, I'd really encourage you to go watch it. I'm sure you could watch it anywhere, the recorded show. The reality is what Florida would do is they would go after the puck if they didn't get, if they didn't get the puck from the other team. What they would do is they would make sure they would take out the other guy that was going after the puck or had possession of the puck. So, Ian, at one point or another, it didn't matter whether Edmonton had the puck or not. Those two players were going to cancel out, and Florida was just faster to recover that loose puck. We also saw it was a lot of isolation as well. I mean, they definitely forced Edmonton to shoot from the outside, weren't allowed to get inside the zone, and that's something you can really appreciate on the defensive end. And with Edmonton, you also noticed that the energy level, especially in the third period, it was going down and down and down. They were tired. They were exhausted. I mean, Connor McDavid could barely stand up. It looked like he was falling down half the time just because of how exhausted and how much he was playing. And a lot of that attributes to the fact that Florida is a very gritty team. Paul Maurice has been very well known for being a head coach who brings in players who have that physicality type of mentality of that, I'm going to push you into the boards. I'm going to put my stick right in between your back. And, you know, that's just what they do in Florida. I mean, this is a very gritty and aggressive team. Well, it seemed like Paul Maurice did that from team to team to team, and he finally had the right concoction of players that would buy into his system that, look, we're going to take players out. You're going to play my style of hockey, and if you're not going to play, you're going to sit. And if you're not going to sit quietly, we're going to release you. And historically, Paul's teams have all played very gritty, grindy games. That's just what they do. But what I love is the fact that all the guys bought into the idea. Because, look, it's not like it's his first rodeo. The guy has been in the rodeo for many, 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 many years. And it's just a matter of having the right chemistry. And, look, chemistry is everything. I mean, look, even on air, chemistry is everything. Imagine if you and I were talking over one another like they do on the Four Letter Network, if you know what I mean. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it just seems to be what they do. But more importantly, when you get guys to buy into a system, and it's easy to say that, but what, what is that system? You're going to work hard every day, every day, and every day. There is no time off. You're going to eat, sleep, and think hockey. You're going to eat, sleep, and think your role until you live it in your brain. And it becomes kind of like when you learn a second language. You have to submerse yourself in the language. Well, I think that hockey is another language for these guys, but really, it's their first language. I mean, when it comes to Florida, Paul Maurice, this has just been a guy that's been hustling and hustling and hustling for so many years and decades trying to win a Stanley Cup. And, I mean, this is just going to be a situation where you see the Florida Panthers ending up with Paul Maurice, hoisting that Stanley Cup, finally after so many years getting the job done. And it's just through that system. And when you buy into a system, and when you have 23 players who are willing to fully commit to what he, what, what the ideology and what the system is, you have a hockey team that is near unbeatable. And we saw with Florida that what a system can be with Paul Maurice, and that's winning a Stanley Cup. Well, his interview afterwards was really good, and it really made a great point. He said, look, we had to lose three times to learn how to win four games. And that's just the mentality. And I love that idea. I mean, look, last year, Florida got their asses kicked sideways by the Vegas Golden Knights. And let's face it, Vegas went in, they punched them in the face, they stole their lunch money, and they ended up hoisting the cup in five games. And this time it was Florida's turn. Remember, this all started back in the regular season. But they really stood out when they beat, and I mean they handily beat the New York Rangers, the Blue Shirts. When they beat the Rangers, really it was two overtime goals that beat Florida against them. Otherwise, I think really Florida won six games against the Rangers, and they really dominated the Rangers. It wasn't, it wasn't a close series at all. The overtime wins, they are what they are. But Florida dominated every aspect of that game. And they were passing Chris, but I'll tip my hat to Edmonton in the last handful of games because Edmonton did take away a lot of the space, the time and space on the ice away from Florida. So Florida was making some very erratic passes and they were kind of pressing in their own end. 
right? And then when they would rush the puck across the, the offensive blue line, it seemed like they were jumping guys up into the play just to keep the puck in that end, but they ended up doing what? Giving up odd man rushes the other way. That's how they got beat. Where you also saw it was kind of similar to in the first period when you had Mateus Yanmark on that odd man rush. It was because of a sloppy play. It was due to the fact that you had a pass, it went awry. Mateus Yanmark, he beat the defenseman, went past him into the neutral zone, got into the offensive zone, deked out Bobrovsky, shot on the left-hand side, and scored that one and only goal for Edmonton. And that's really what you see is that when you do have an odd man rush or a two-on-one or three-on-two, Whichever team has momentum and the energy going down the opposite end of the ice, that is what is very vital. But thankfully, Florida did capitalize on it and did overcome it to win a Stanley Cup against Edmonton. Well, you know, with the mad rushes, and we'll get into this in the, in the next segment, with the mad scrambles and mad rushes in the last 10 minutes, well, actually the last five minutes of the game, yes, Edmonton was gassed. They were completely gassed, and you could see it. Because, let's face it, when you watch the body language of the team that's chasing, and you know they just can't muster it up, you say, what really happened? Well, you know what? Here's analogy, and then we're going to go to break. It's almost like watching a football game where you've got a team that's beating the other team down on the offensive line. The offensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage. The defenders just can't stop the run anymore because they're running down your throat. And then late in the game, third quarter, end of third quarter, fourth quarter, what happens? That team just runs at will. And then when they try to jump the line, guess what? There's a nice little pass right over the top, and there's a touchdown. Anyway, folks, back here in a few minutes with Edra Kelly from the Sports Angle. I'm your remaster self from the Sports Circus. Back in just a few. Don't go anywhere. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. Could you use a little extra money right now? If you'd like to borrow up to $100,000 and get pre-approved in minutes, call the number we'll give you at the end of this commercial. Our lending partners have already loaned millions of dollars to individuals just like you, and we're ready to lend you up to $100,000 if you qualify. Even if your credit is not perfect, you could use the money to pay off high-interest credit cards for home renovations or consolidate existing debt. You can get flexible, easy-to-pay terms. The consultation to find out if you qualify is free. Free. To find out if you qualify for our special financing program, call this toll-free number 24 hours a day. 800-335-1376. 800-335-1376. 800-335-1376. That's 800-335-1376. Important terms and conditions apply. Not all applicants will qualify. Loan amount, annual percentage rate, and term will vary depending on credit worthiness. Applying does not guarantee approval. Account approval is subject to verification and confirmation of your credit history and acceptance by a lender. If you choose to apply for a loan through us, a consumer report will be obtained to evaluate your credit worthiness in connection with your application for credit. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without that 
the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935. That's 702-799-9935. 702-799-9935. Or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Roy Firestow. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal. Thank you, Roy, and welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the Amp TV studio, AAMP.TV. Folks, make sure to check out the SportsCircus.com for our upcoming guests, our prior guests, our recorded shows, which are our podcasts. No, we don't do a podcast. We just happen to have those on the recorded show podcast platform, such as Apple, Amazon, uh, Audible, Spotify, iHeart, Pandora, you name it, Google. We're there. You can't get away from us. Also, make sure to check out the partners page. One of those great partners that's been with us since the very beginning is... The College of Southern Nevada Athletics. Check us out at csncoyotes.com for upcoming games and events. That's the College of Southern Nevada Athletics, csncoyotes.com. Yes! All right, welcome back, everybody. Listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates and independents, including our friends over in Honolulu on CBS Sports 1500 KHKA. That's home of the New York Yankees and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Welcome in everybody up and down the West Coast from San Diego all the way up to Seattle on various, various stations. I just can't keep naming them all. And even our friends over in Denver all the way up through the upper Midwest down to great Texas. And even our friends over in Auburn, Alabama, big hello to them on the Atlanta Braves Radio Network. That's W-A-U-D. And big hello to our friends over in Atlanta, W-D-J-Y 99.1 FM. And everybody else watching on TV and everybody else also on Chicago Food Favorites. That's Chicago Food Favorites on Facebook. Make sure you like and follow. No, you don't have to subscribe. Just like, follow, participate, have some fun with it. That's what we do over here on the circus. All right, back here with Ian Kelly from the Sports Angle, We're talking a little bit of hockey. And, you know, I left off with an interesting analogy on kind of like Smash Mouth football. And would you equate? the smash mouth hockey game to smash mouth football and does florida exemplify a smash mouth hockey game why i look at it and say when it comes to florida they remind me very similar to back in the 70s and 80s when you had those defenses in the nfl where it didn't matter what your offense did didn't matter what the running back did they were going to take you out like they were a team that was going to level you they were going to destroy you uh, you know, back in the day, you had the Raiders, you had the Steelers. Like, you had all these great defenses that had that smash-mouth mentality. And when it comes to defense and everything like that, the Florida Panthers were that way as well. And uh, I sit there and say with Florida, they're just, their defense, their mentality was definitely great. And what you see, very similar to what the NFL was back in the day with those defenses. You know, I would, I would venture to say that the way Florida won this game, Game 7, that is, is very similar to how the Chicago Bears, the 1985 Chicago Bears, played defense with a smash mouth football defense. Well, guess what? I think Florida's smash mouth defense in hockey is a very, very good parallel because look, offensively, they didn't light the world afire. No, it was the Bears defense that scored. Well, hell, they dropped, what, 45 points on the New England Patriots. And of course, that's always a laughable moment just because, hey, let's face it. It was the Bears' defense that did it, outside of the fact that Refrigerator Perry came in to score the team's only touchdown in that game. And, of course, we had a field goal by Kevin Butler early in the game. But ultimately, when we think about the way Florida played this game, with Verhage with a wonderful high tip to pop it right through the wickets of a very mediocre Stuart Skinner. You know, look, look at that. Yeah, he is. Yeah, you can nod your head, yes, because he actually is very mediocre. You look at the season, he is very mediocre, along with the Edmonton defense, was very mediocre all season. But nonetheless, 
In case you can't see it, everybody on TV, it's uh, Ian Kelly is bobbing his head. Yes, kind of like a bobblehead. But anyway, that said, <laughs> that said, I mean, I don't think that Edmonton's defense showed up all year until it was time for the Stanley Cup final. And really, they didn't show up until the last, we'll say the, we'll say the last five games, because the first two games, they were non-existent. They were just, in my opinion, they were just beaten, and they were beaten kind of badly. The first game, they were shut out 3-0. You know, they did take an early lead in game number two, but the defense fell asleep. And Darnell Nurse was a really big problem on defense for the Edmonton Oilers. But I would have to attribute that for the four-check of Florida because, again, they just punched the defense in the face of Edmonton. They stole their lunch money, kicked him in the nuts, and then called it a day. How you look at it, you know, when you have a great four check and you have a team that's willing to just smash mouth, you know, hit you over and over and over again, you know, you have a defense that's always on the back end, always trying to, you know, get back to get back and get back. I kind of look at it and see as a Florida Panthers team, they did what they had to do to win. And this was an organization where you had, you know, Oliver Ekman Larson, Aaron Ekblad, Brandon Montour. This was a Florida Panthers team that executed when it mattered and defensively got the job done and helped out Sergey Bobrovsky beat the Edmonton Oilers. You know, honestly, I thought this game or this series, as I told you before the series started, I thought it was going to end in five games. And it's sure, boy, I sure looked like I had it right after four games. I'm like, oh, wow, they're coming back home. <laughs> they're going to hoist the cup in Florida. Da, da. But you know what? They just fell asleep at the wheel. Or was it Edmonton really adjusted well? What was it? What I look at is kind of similar to both. I actually think that Edmonton did adapt and they did evolve and see what Florida did in the first three games. But you also had a situation where it seemed like Florida, it didn't seem like they were kind of continuing to do the same thing they did in the first three games. The strategies and all the thing that Paul Maurice was doing, it wasn't connecting and it wasn't doing what needed to be done in four, five, and six. So it seems like with Edmonton, those three games that they won, yeah, the offense had something to do with it. Connor McDavid was doing what he had to do. But it seemed like there was evolution there, and progression with Edmonton, whereas Florida was kind of not doing what they were doing in the first three games. However, in game seven, that mentality, that defensive-minded situation with Edmonton, you know, defensive-wise, Edmonton was not doing what they had to do. In fact, it was very mediocre with, with Edmonton, whereas Edmonton did not have enough to get up against Florida in their defense in game seven. You know, I wonder, just out of my own silly curiosity, of course, that we're both here in Las Vegas, wonder what Vegas would have did against Florida in this series. You know, I, I almost think that Florida would have beat them anyway because Florida was, just seemed to be on a mission to beat whoever the hell it was that they played. It didn't really matter who they played. And I think Florida learned their lesson last year. And, well, they, they went into a series against a very offensive, heavy team and, well, we saw what happened. And, and Vegas scored a lot of goals against them. But as Paul Maurice says, you know, he had to lose games to learn how to win games. But I almost wonder if it would have been maybe a, a five- or a six-game series in a turnabout against Vegas. What do you think? When, when you study what Vegas Golden Knights did last year and you compare it to what Florida did this year, Florida would have won. This is a Florida Panthers organization that was just on momentum, and they were really on a tear this year to get to the Stanley Cup final. And then once they got to the Stanley Cup final, those first three games really proved that the Florida Panthers organization, they had the right steps, and really they had the right mentality with Paul Maurice in order to win this championship. So when you, you know, Vegas Golden Knights, hey, props to them. Last year they won the Stanley Cup. Obviously we were both Las Vegas, we know that. But the Florida Panthers organization they were going to win the Stanley Cup. And you know what? It could have been a six-game, seven-game series. It was Florida versus Vegas, but the outcome would have been the same. Florida would have won this matchup, regardless of who they were facing. That's right. Oh, by the way, folks, that's Ian Kelly from the Sports Angle. Ian, how can everybody watch the program and listen to your content? So the Sports Angle, go to the website, www.sportsangle.com. I upload articles every single week onto the website. We also have an audio page and a video page. We also have live streams on Twitch as well. So if you go to the website, www.thesportsangle.com, and check out all the brand-new content we upload weekly to thesportsangle.com. Yeah, now thesportsangle.com. Listen, the Sports Angle has been around for, what, five, six years now? 
<laughs> five years. It's incredible. That's crazy. <laughs> How many shows have you done? Uh, we did about 700 with Sports Angle. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of shows, young man. And, you know, you've certainly grown up right before our very eyes. And you were just an intern when I met you over at AM 1400 right here in Las Vegas. And you know what I said? Why don't you consider doing a daily show? I remember we had that conversation. We had that conversation right outside the doors of the radio station, right outside of Studio A. And I just felt that this was something that you seemed like you were really ready to do. And here you are today. You know, trial and error, stuff like that. And there's a lot of, you know, bumps in the way. But overall, over the last five years, where the sports angle is now, uh, definitely I'm happy to say that it is in the right direction. It's been doing a lot of positives and ups as of late. So sportsangle.com, check it out. Amazing website. And like I said, we post every single week. So You know what we're going to do? We're going to see if we can get one of our hockey guys onto your show to talk. You know, our regular hockey guy here for the sports circus, you saw him on TV, which is Dave Jackson, the rules analyst for ESPN Hockey, right? And he was handling the Stanley Cup. And of course, he handled all the playoff games for ESPN. And of course, ABC is Disney, ESPN, same thing. And so it's cool to see our guy, Dave Jackson, on television talking about this and that. And you know what? Dave made a, uh, an assessment here in our last 30 seconds, uh, an assessment here in the, I think it was in the first period of, game, of this game today. And it happened that, I mean, look, when somebody falls down on the ice, there's nothing you can do if you're, you can't stop your momentum. And I think Dave Jackson had it right, just like when he had it right in the previous game on the goal that was disallowed. Because when you think about the alleged offside, that was home cooking, man. I don't know. I think Dave did a great job in the Stanley Cup Finals. And Dave, 32 years as an official league, he is a very, very good one. And, you know, I think ESPN is very lucky to have Dave Jackson. All right, folks, and so are we here at the Sports Circus. Back here in a few minutes with Ian Kelly from the Sports Angle. And I'm your remaster self from the Sports Circus. Don't go anywhere. I'm your ringmaster cell of the Sports Circus, a primetime nationally syndicated television, radio, sports, and entertainment show. The Sports Circus covers topics others are too scared to talk about. There's no other primetime show like it out here that'll punch you in the face and you'll beg for more. Join me, Hall of Famers, World Champions, and All-Star Celebrity Guests for Chaos and Controversy here on Lipson and all podcast platforms, plus the SportsCircus.com. Remember, folks, it's a circus and we prove it every day. Hello, Americans. It's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Call right now. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. For the last time, that's 800-950-2049. The old way of living with diabetes is a pain. You've got to remember to do your testing and always need to stick your fingers to test your blood sugar. The new way to live your life with diabetes is with a continuous glucose monitor. Apply a discrete sensor on your body and it continuously monitors your glucose levels, helping you spend more time in range and freeing you from painful finger sticks. If you are living with type 1 or type 2 diabetes and you use insulin or have had hypoglycemic events, you might be eligible for a CGM through your insurance benefits. U.S. Med partners with over 500 private insurance companies and Medicare. We offer free shipping, 90-day supplies, and we bill your insurance. Call us today for a free benefits check. 800-659-7805. 800-659-7805. 800-659-7805. 
That's 800-659-7805. That's ridiculous. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. Hey, everyone. Dave Jackson here, ESPN rules analyst on ESPN Hockey, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Mary Master Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV. This segment is brought to you in part by our friends over at the Sports Angle. And here to tell you all about the Sports Angle is the creator and host, Ian Kelly. Sports Angle. <clears throat> so we have a website, www.thesportsangle.com, where we upload articles every single week going through a range of topics, baseball, basketball, football, hockey, racing, and sportsangle.com. We upload, we have audio links, we have video links, we have live streams on Twitch, we have a bunch of content every single week on the sportsangle.com. So go to the website, www.thesportsangle.com and check out all of our weekly articles and stuff that we post on the website. All right, so what is the focus of the sports angle? If you had to narrow it down, if you had to just... Say in one sentence, this is what we specialize in. What would it be? Trying to give you a different angle on the sports world. Okay. All right. Well, that's simple. Just like that very quick applause. <laughs> All right. So listen, final thoughts on Lord Stanley's Cup and the finals. Are any? What are the takeaways from this for the audience that doesn't know much about hockey? Well, what really impressed me was the fact that you had the Florida Panthers team that they must have, they must, they didn't have the most talented roster in the NHL, but what the Florida Panthers had was a unity. Is you had an organization that know their role. It didn't matter if you're in the top six, middle six, bottom six, where you were on the pairing or defensively, but you had a Florida Panthers organization where every single man on that roster knew their role and executed it when it mattered. And that is what my main takeaway was when it came to Florida and how they won this championship. It was because everybody knew what they had to do when they stepped on that ice for Game 7. You know, my takeaway from this was the beat goes on for the Canadian teams. They just keep seem to choking year in and year out. I mean, come on, let's face it. They haven't won since 1993. That would be the Montreal Canadiens against the Los Angeles Kings way back in the day. That was the Gretzky Kings as well. But it just seems like when the Canadian teams get in there, they play with 10 fingers wrapped around their throats. There's so much pressure on them. Of course, you know, who knows the next time we're going to see the Maple Leafs in there. I don't know. That that in itself, you know, is sort of laughable. But let's face it. The only teams that can seem to win anything in Canada are who? Montreal and Edmonton back in, what, 1990? So it's been a minute. But it just seems like the hockey epicenter in these United States of America happens to be in Florida. I mean, come on, look. In the last five Stanley Cups, they've won three of the last cups down there. And, of course, between Tampa and Florida. And they have, they have represented the Eastern Conference in the last five years. What does that tell you about coconut trees and hockey? How it works. I mean, you have a team like the Florida Panthers, Tampa Bay Lightning, two franchises that if you had gone a decade, 10, 15 years from now, they might be a pinnacle. They might be an actual stable franchise when it comes to a pillar from the NHL. 
But if you actually gone 10 or 15 years prior to that, you actually went back to the 90s and 2000s, this was a two organizations that really weren't that much on the map. They really didn't have a flag planted in the NHL that much, but now they do, and they've won a bunch. Uh, they've won a couple of cups now with Tampa Bay and with Florida. So you have a very good situation where it's no longer being dominated by the normal four or five teams in the Eastern Conference. I mean, we, everybody knows the Boston Bruins. They have been there forever. They've been to the Cup here now and then. But now you have Tampa Bay, you have Florida, you have some new blood that's kind of at the top in the Eastern Conference. And it's really good for the rest of the league. I think it's good for the league. But what it also says is there's discipline in great weather locations to focus on cold weather sports. And I mean, to me, it seems logical because it's so damn hot outside down in Florida, right? For example, you got to get away from that heat. And what are you going to do? You're going to go skate around the rink. And yes, the conditions get a little bit tough because the ice does, well, it kind of gets a little bit dicey after a little bit. But what are we seeing? We're seeing discipline, discipline, discipline. And that's what we saw with the Tampa Bay Lightning. And that's what we've seen with the Florida Panthers. So we're seeing disciplined hockey in the Southeast versus your cold weather locations. And I have to say, it's it's a little bit ironic to see it, but I kind of like it. I dig it because it's not what the average Joe or Josephine would expect. It's now what I expect in hockey. And what's even more fascinating about that is that everyone focusing on the Southeast of Tampa Bay and Florida and all the weather out there. But some people may, may forget that the desert used to not be when it came to hockey. You really didn't think about the desert. But then all of a sudden, the Vegas Golden Knights showed up. You know, the BS Coyotes were kind of there ahead of time, but now, hey, goodbye to you. But the Vegas Golden Knights winning that Stanley Cup here in the desert as well kind of helped the fact that now when it comes to the desert, it's not just baseball, it's not just basketball, but now hockey is a staple that can work in the desert here in Nevada. Right, and so we're seeing the same dynamic with the hot weather, right? Get away from the hot weather, get indoors, mm -hmm. and that's how I see it. And now, of course, the Arizona Coyotes going up to Utah, and, you know, looking at the names that they had, I think we've talked about this before, and I really thought that it was going to come down to maybe the Utah Blizzard or the Utah... I don't know, maybe the, maybe the Black Diamonds or something like that, right? Black Diamonds, Golden Knights. I mean, that seems like kind of a cool thing. But the Utah Hockey Club, that's like the Washington Football Club or Washington Football Team. What do they call them? Washington Football Remember I mean, before Washington the before Commodore, the before Washington before the, the yeah, yeah be, before the commies. What they call them? The the Washington Football Team. It was the Washington football team, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know, I, I, I sort of have a problem with Utah's lack of creativity. But I think eventually they're going to probably be called like the blizzard, right? So the blizzard would play the avalanche. I mean, that's in the perfect storm, huh? Get it? Tip your waiter, I'm here all week, folks, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but anyway, I think the idea that, I mean, look, it's, Folks, in case you don't know how hot it is in the summertime in Utah, in that Salt Lake area, man, it is hot. It's it's really warm because, wait, well, let's face it, it's, it's the desert. But at the end of the day, it does snow up there, of course, like here in Las Vegas, where this is the high desert, and we get a dusting of snow maybe once a year, something like that. But, Ian, how do you see the team now of course because they have a little bit more money they're going to spend some more money they already play in a nice big arena that's where they're going to play where the jazz play because the same ownership what kind of changes do you expect out of well the utah hockey team now or hockey club right what do you expect out of them when they eventually get to a time where they're going to do re-signings when they're going to do free agency when utah and ryan smith say they're going to go out and spend money I truly believe they're going to go out and they're going to go get free agents. You know, it's not just going to be Kay, uh, Kelton, uh, Clayton Keller and 20 random guys. You're going to have a Arizona Coyotes, now Utah hockey team, where they're going to go out and spend money, where they're going to go out and get free agents and acquire players that actually can go out and be a competitive team. And when the Utah Hockey Club plays at the Delta Center alongside the Utah Jazz, it's going to be a situation where – you have some good players, some young guys as well that are coming through the farm system that will be making an impact. So you're going to kind of have an influx of some players that they've spent money on, 
the players that they trade for and acquire, and then some young farm system guys that are going to be able to develop and kind of progress and grow out there in Salt Lake City. Watch out for the Utah Hockey Club or the Utah Yeti or the Utah Blizzard or whatever the heck their name is. Why would they call themselves the Yeti? You know, they have also had the Hives as one of the... <laughs> <laughs> as one of their names. Hey, so what are you going to do? you going to, the hives break out or someone's going to break out in hives. I mean, which one is it? I don't really know what it is. Right. So they really couldn't use the hives, you know, cause obviously beehives, there's a, you know, even on the state highway signs for Utah, I think they have those, those beehives or something like that. Right. That's funny. Cause my old man yeah. used to call me a beehive when I was a kid. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, what do you expect the team to do from a, I, I don't. Are they going to be really aggressive in dealing off draft picks? Because you know they do have a stockpile of draft picks. Are they going to try to do what Kelly McCrimmon does? Which I'm not a big Kelly McCrimmon fan at all. But I mean, look, I do like the the, the deal for Tomas Hurdle. I love that deal. That's the only one oh, that really? that and Mark Stone. Those are the two deals that I really like. Still not a, not a big fan of of Jack Eichel because Jack Eichel is for Jack Eichel. I mean, he's good. He's very good, mm-hmm. but not a fan of Jack Eichel as. Well, as as the player that he has historically shown. But what do you expect them to do? Are they going to deal off all their draft picks and get stupid so they can compete right away? What do you think on that? Take 30 seconds. We're going to break. Where the Utah Hockey Club is going to uh, kind of blend in is that they're going to make trades, but they're also still going to focus on their young guys. So they're going to make draft picks. They're going to make moves, but they're also going to focus on their farm system they've been building up the last four or five years. So it's going to be a mix of what... Uh, of what's going on in Utah. Are they a playoff team? Two or three years from now. Okay, not next year. Not next year. So they're not going to sell their soul. They're going to be smart about it, and they're going to play a little bit more conservatively, which is exactly what I would expect them to do. All right, take us to break here. We're going out right now. This is the Sports Circus. There was the Ringmaster Sal. I'm, I'm Ian Kelly from the Sports Angle, and this was the Sports Circus. And we'll be back in just a few moments. Can your IRA stand up to the next financial crisis that our top economists are saying is at our doorsteps? By allocating a percentage of your IRA into physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover, you can diversify and safeguard your holdings from turbulent markets and economic downturns by putting your IRA back on the gold standard. Find out how to safeguard your assets with a tax-free rollover with a Genesis Gold IRA, the only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Call now for your free gold and silver report. Protect your IRA today with one simple phone call and learn how to qualify for up to $10,000 in free silver. Call Genesis Gold Group, empowering faith-driven stewardship. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. That's 800-932-5517. If you served in the Marine Corps, by now you know about the contaminated water problem at Camp Lejeune. If you were stationed or worked at Camp Lejeune from 1953 to 1987, you probably have a lot of questions. We have some answers. You could be entitled to compensation. Billions of dollars are being allocated to pay for damages to anyone stationed at Camp Lejeune during that time. Unfortunately, it appears that officials may have known the contaminated water problem existed and did little to protect their men. The Semper Fi Code was not honored. If you or someone in your family has developed a serious illness, including various forms of cancer, call this Camp Lejeune legal support line right now. You can't turn back the clock and change what happened, but you can certainly call right now and learn your rights as a Marine. Here's the number. Call 800-335-7196. 800-335-7196. That's 800-335-7196. 
That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 That's 702-799-9935 702-799-9935 Or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com Hey everybody, this is Brian Erlacher. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the Amp TV studio, double AMP. Dot TV. Folks, make sure to check out the sportscircus.com for our upcoming guests, our prior guests, or recorded shows, which are our podcast. Also, check out our partners page. One of our fun partners that's been with us for quite some time is Al's number one Italian beef in Chicago's Little Italy at 1079 West Taylor Street. Yes! But that's good stuff, folks. If you don't know what an Italian beef sandwich is, you're really missing out. But you know who does know? All of our friends at Chicago Food Favorites on Facebook. They know what that is. Check them out at alsbeef.com. That's alsbeef.com. Or if you're interested in picking some of that wonderful Italian beef up, go ahead and check them out at goldbelly.com. That's goldbelly.com. Just type in Al's Beef, and you'll get yourself one hell of a feast from Al's number one Italian beef, the founder. Back in 1938, they were established. They've been in business for many, many, many years, and they are truly the best in the business. Yes! All right. No, we don't get anything for saying that. Maybe once in a while we may get a free beef sandwich. I don't know. But generally speaking, truly, they are the best in the business, and they're friends of the circus as well. All right, welcome back to everybody. You know who you are. Back here with Ian Raquelli from The Sports Angle. Make sure you check him out at thesportsangle.com. Lots of great reading and lots of great shows for you to listen to. About five years worth of them, if I seem to recall. And you know what? Ian, uh, in between... In between segments, I was showing you some really cool old baseball cards. Now, I've been collecting cards for a very long time. I started out early on with some 1950s and 60s football cards. And then I started showing you some 1964 Topps Giants cards, not San Francisco Giants. No, these are the Topps Giants. So for everybody that's watching, they're probably about maybe maybe six, probably about six inches long. They're pretty big. They're big cars. They're Topps Giants. And then, of course, I showed you the Willie Mays and the Hank Aaron and all that other stuff. And then I had the 1971 Topps. They weren't, the, the, are they the Topps Jumbos? They're, they're called, I think they're the Topps Jumbos. Anyway, these are almost like cardboard. They're so big. But those cards are a lot of fun. And of course, you saw the two uh pete rose cards the reggie jackson card the hank aaron the willie mays and and i've got a lou brock and all kinds of great cards and even some of those same year from 1971 the tops jumbos was the football cards from deacon jones to johnny unitas and fran tarkenton bob greasy all those guys got a whole bunch of cards and ian i know that we participate in a fantasy baseball league and that is, of course, the Ringmaster Baseball. That's the Three Ring Circus Baseball. And looking at the standings right now, as we stand, for all you fantasy baseball players, of course, you can tell we're shifting into baseball. Right now, uh, 
it is the red Corvette in first place at 77, 38, and 5, closely followed by number two in second place and first place in the other division, which would be Ringmaster Baseball at 75, 39, and 6. All right. So Ringmaster Baseball is only a game and a half out of first place. Coming in third place is Chun Lee, which happens to be my nephew, Aaron, who is eight and a half back at 67, 45, and 8. In fourth place is joseph's reasonable team and that's uh well he's 13 games off the pace at 66 53 and one ian's agreeable team i wonder why they're agreeable you have to change your name ian's agreeable team in fifth place and just a few games out of the last playoff spot they're 51 66 and three followed up by nate dunno who is two and a half behind you D stat who is five and a half behind you and bringing up the rear is John's marvelous team, which isn't so marvelous at 44 games <laughs> off the pace. So <laughs> what does it take to play fantasy base for all those people? What, what is fantasy baseball for all those people that don't know what fantasy baseball is? Fantasy baseball, you go into a draft, you draft a roster of your favorite players or players that you think are going to be good for the upcoming year. Half of them are going to let you down. A few of them are going to be put on IL. And then there might be one or two that actually pan out. And you actually might have a stud roster. Some really good players that you're actually going to be set with. Now, when it comes to fantasy baseball, there's also going to be the fact that you're going to have a bunch of trades. There's going to be one or two people that are going to use the waiver wire to their advantage. And there's also going to be that one person in fantasy baseball who never checks their lineup. They're going to have a bunch of players that are going to be injured. And they're going to be 44 games off the pace. Okay, but fantasy baseball essentially is you're managing your own team. You're drafting your own team, and you're starting your best players on a day-to-day basis. So, I mean, it's a pretty big commitment, unlike fantasy football, where you've got games. Well, now in the NFL, we have games technically on Thursday. Then we move in later in the season to Saturday, Sunday, and Mondays. So really four days a week versus baseball is seven days a week. So you've got to manage this team to the best of your ability. And if your players aren't performing or if they're injured, you have to make acquisitions or trades or releases. And I mean, you're really managing your own team. So now this is what the third year of Ringmaster Baseball and three ring circus baseball, right? And I have yet to win this league. And Chun Lee has won, I think. Chuntley won last year, the year before that, or no, Chuntley won two years before that. Last year it was, I think, Dominic's team or John's Marvelous team, who's not that marvelous right now. And right now it's the Red Corvette, and they are showing the way right now at basically what? They are 30, they're, is it 39 games over 500? That's crazy to imagine. Crazy to imagine. Of course, we'll give a little round of applause. And we're going to cut that short because that's going to go away after this week because I believe Ringmaster Baseball will be back in first place. And, you know, there are different approaches to fantasy baseball and building the team. Now, guys like yourself, you participate in the draft, right? The live draft, right? Uh, Yes, yes, I do participate in the actual baseball draft. I don't just put it on autopilot. And that's it's like a snake draft, right? So you go from one to eight, then eight to one, right? So it goes back and forth like that, all right? So for me, like this year, I couldn't participate. I was in the middle of a live show. And so I had to have the auto draft take care of my team. But you know, I have found, honestly, that I do better with auto draft because every time I think that I'm picking great players, it blows up in my face. I don't know what it is. I could have the best draft. I can end up with an A rating and end up in the toilet. When I'm the complete opposite. If I play on an auto draft, I will have the worst team imaginable, and then I gotta go to the waiver wire and pretty much replace half the team within week week two. Yeah, and that's kind of what I've done. And here we are how many weeks into this? Let's see. We are a grand total of we're in week thirteen. And so after week thirteen, it looks like I'm actually going to be able to take first place over literally into the fourteenth week. And and of course, the next week, I'm going to play the team that I would just be passing. And so there's a good chance. And he and I tied last week at four to four. 
but it's always a dogfight. But the only way that I could seem to do well in fantasy baseball is by letting the computer just auto draft and then me filling the holes. I just, I don't know what it is. I mean, I have confidence. I know the players, but for some reason, I just don't seem to draft the players that perform. So where is the position that you are a strength at? And then where's the position that you're a weakness? Well, I mean, in your current roster right now, my current roster. I mean, look, I'm a former pitcher and I believe that pitching wins championships. So I'm really heavy in starters and relievers. Very, very heavy in that. And I do like base stealers on the offensive side. And who I have a surplus of is starting pitching, but my bullpen is weak. Yeah. So once you get me into the eighth or ninth inning, I'm not going to score that many points. So. Yeah, my, my bullpen is made up of, I've got the closer for Atlanta, I got the closer for Houston. I've got the closer for the Giants. And I have the closer for, let's see, one, let's see, Minnesota. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'll strike that. No, I have four closers. That's it Atlanta, Houston, San Francisco, and the Giants. But I'm really heavy in starting pitching right now with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven starting pitchers. And I have two on the, three on the injured list. So I really have 10 starting pitchers. Well, I think you need, might need to make a trade. Uh, if you want to call up Ian's agreeable team and make a trade, just let me know. All right, all right. Now, I mean, what do I need on the offensive side? I, really, I still don't really have home run hitters. My catcher position, I've just been in and out of that. It's been awful. But I've been solid at first base with Pete Alonzo. And, and he's done pretty well for me. And at second base, I've done very well this year with uh, Terang, Brandon Terang. I mean, he's been very, very good for me. At shortstop, I flip-flopped that all over the place. And I just haven't been stable at short. I've had the players, but I just, I'm not confident. And at third base, I've had Alec Bohm there the whole year. But in the outfield, I was able to acquire Lewis Robert, who is not really playing well right now, but he can hit. I did take uh, Stephen Kwan. Stephen Kwan was available, and he's leading the league in hitting, if I'm not mistaken, or second in the league in hitting behind Jimenez. And I have Tatis as a home run hitter, and I also have Juan Soto as a home run hitter. But the reality is I don't hit a lot of home runs. My team does not. What about your team? I mean, how my team looks. I mean, my catcher, he kept on getting hurt at the beginning of the year. Now he's coming back, but Sean Murphy is going to be interested to see what happens there. Then at first base, he's just been mildly inconsistent. I mean, his batting average is poor, but yet when he does hit home runs, he oh. does rate. Who is that? So, I, top of my head, I don't remember who the first baseman is. You don't. But when it comes to the organization or anything, second base, shortstops, actually been not that consistent for me. Your first Third baseman base, is Mount I do Castle. have Gunnar Henderson. Mount Castle is your first baseman. Mount, Mount Castle, who does hit home runs where he needs to. Third base is Gunnar Henderson, and that has been somebody I've been hyping up and someone who we kind of disagree on when it comes to Gunnar Henderson. I think that he is going to be a star at the next level. And then you also have a couple of outfielders who unfortunately, one of them does steal a good amount of bases for me, but the rest of them just do not hit for average. And that's just kind of where it digs me in. So it's, my, my starting lineup is shaky. And that's the reason why I'm fifth right now is just that my lineup is just not getting enough in that stack column to get seven and three or to go, you know, three and three and five. Okay, f final word. Take 10 seconds. What's the best move for fantasy baseball players right now? And then we're going to wrap it up. The best move is starting pitching. You got to have more starting pitching than you think. Okay, I would agree with that. And you know what? I'm going to stick with that because I've got a whole bunch of it. Maybe I will make a deal with Ian's agreeable team. We'll have to see. Anyway, folks, that's going to do it for the Sports Circus. A big thanks for Ian Rickelli from the Sports Angle giving his analysis on hockey and fantasy baseball. And I'm the Ringmaster Sal, and we're going to see you in about 23 hours right here on your favorite station. So until then, so long, everyone.
can your IRA stand up to the next financial crisis that our top economists are saying is at our doorsteps? By allocating a percentage of your IRA into physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover, you can diversify and safeguard your holdings from turbulent markets and economic downturns by putting your IRA back on the gold standard. Find out how to safeguard your assets with a tax-free rollover with a Genesis Gold IRA, the only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Call now for your free gold and silver report. Protect your IRA today with one simple phone call and learn how to qualify for up to $10,000 in free silver. Call Genesis Gold Group, empowering faith-driven stewardship. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517.